Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I have another interesting video here. Uh, this one is going to be in a 2011 uh, BMW 328 with an N51 engine. Uh, the customer concern is uh, rough idle, uh, engine noise, and check engine light. I have recorded this video in the shop and was a short video that I recorded for the customer. So you will see that my wording is not as complex let's say as for technicians so i think this is going to be a good fit for pretty much everyone uh, customers that wants to know how the system works what is a cam and crank correlation uh, check so they understand the time consuming it takes to do something like this and also for technicians all over the world that want to learn how to do this i want to share the information i like always to try to teach the new technicians and even not a new technician that doesn't really know how to do this and uh, let them learn how to use an oscilloscope, how to set it up, and then how to uh, do a test like this. All right, so the first thing that I'm doing in here, uh, I'm going to have my window small and I'm going to run a uh, screen capture so you guys understand how I gather the information and where to connect the uh, oscilloscope for the cam and crank correlation for those that knows this engine the crank sensor is really hard to get it's under the intake goes to the starter or on the bottom of the starter so it's really really hard to get the uh, connection in there so the best place to go is via the engine computer which is in this car is on the right side uh, close to the uh, cabin or filters you will need to remove that uh, um, cow space let's call that where a uh, cabin or filter is located and then you can get access to the computer it's just a plastic cover that you need to remove so right now on the screen i have um, the wire diagram this is all oem information uh, as you can see this is from air and uh, i always look for we got the crunch of position sensor and then we have the intake camshaft sensor and the exhaust camshaft sensor. The vano solenoid we don't need for that test, so only these three. Uh, we can see that the crankshaft is located in connector X60005. And then the uh, cam sensors, uh, we see that this dotted line in here stops and it doesn't follow, but it, it starts first or again in here and then goes and it's telling me that those two sensors are in connector x60007 uh, a lot of people as well uh, what does that means again the nice thing about working with original information is i can click in this and this is going to open another window which is going to show me the installation uh, let me see yes i can now zoom in here which is pretty nice so uh, first we see that we have the crank position sensor. Uh, these sensors for, again, the ones that don't know, uh, especially on the N51, if you ever have a no crank sensor signal that, I mean, you know that you are in the wire, yellow wire, but you don't have power, that actually it gets power from a fuse. The one on the crankshaft is on the um, glove box. You will find fuse 11 and in the same place, F uh, fuse 37 is for the two cam uh, intake cam sensors and the band of solenoid. So if you are missing one of those signals, make sure that you go over to the glove box. We don't need that for here. I know that they're working and I have signals. So again, you just connect the um, oscilloscope. You're gonna use three channels. I The way that I record this is uh, blue channel, which is channel one on the picoscope, is going to be for the crankshaft position sensor. Um, the second channel, which is the red channel, is going to be for the intake camshaft sensor. And then the third channel, which is uh, green, is going to be for the exhaust camshaft sensor. So we're going to use the signal. And you're going to say, well, how do you know which one is the signals? Again, uh, knowing, um, I'm, you know, with um, experience, I know that anything that is marked on BMWs with 31 means ground. So this pin 30 on the crankshaft position sensor is the ground. And if we see right here, this is coming from terminal 87, uh, and that is power. 
So obviously a three wire sensor, we're gonna have power, ground, and then a signal. So this tells me that this is a signal. And if we see this diagram in here, it's showing a, um, what it looks like a MOSFET and then going to ground. So the computer will ground the signal and then it will produce a square waveform of zero to five volts. So we will need a pin 29 on connector X0, uh, sorry, X6305, and then we have it here. So this right here has uh, included on the same connector, we will have X6005, and then this with the long, I think it's a 43 pin, if I remember correct, and the X6007, it has, I think it's 23 or 24, but we will see that in a second. So since I click on X005, if I go over to the connector view, now it's going to open another image and it's going to tell me that it is actually a 44 pin so again you can see that we have a 44 pin in here and the way to find out where exactly because as you see in the vehicle and probably in the video i think i showed a little bit uh, that it's very hard to see exactly the, the wires because the pins are very small and sometimes it's hard to see so follow colors uh, in this case, we got a yellow, which is pin 29, and then 30, pin 30 is black with the blue. So you will look for that yellow next to a black with the blue, and that will give you an idea where you are. All right, so that is for the crank sensor signal. I'm going to go over to the connector X607, and you need to click for whoever doesn't use BMW. The same thing is if you're using ISTA, ISTA has the same information and you can, if you're using it on a computer. So again, I click on this X6007 and it's right away giving me the view of the connector. Again, this is the X6005 and this is the X6007. And this is a 26 pin connector. So we will look for, again, the intake and exhaust camshaft. Again, the same thing. We got power. Uh, in this case, pin 11 is ground. And then, uh, sorry, no. Pin 24 is ground and the yellow and the intake is a signal and the exhaust is a yellow with a blue and then we got pin 11 and pin 12 and you will have to look again for a wire color it shows us in this location and i think if i remember correct in the car this actually if you look at it because remember this is looking at the connector the computer will have the pins backwards so you will have one in here and then 13 and then 14 and 26 at the computer remember oh they they show the connector view not the computer so we will look for again yellow and yellow and blue and then pins 11 and 12 and you will also know that you're in the correct pins if you look into the other side you will look pins 24 and 25 to be a black with a blue and a black with a white those are the sensor grounds so that's those are the connections that you're looking for test on the cam and crank correlation for your vehicle I have already the oscilloscope, which is the tool that we use to get that capture that you're seeing in there. Let me explain you what we have here. All connections happens on the engine computer, which is right in this box. Why so it's always very important that the filters and covers are all in place because the water might get in there. Not the case on your car, but just so you know. Uh, we have, uh, again, a sensor on the crankshaft, which is the main bottom rod, let's say, that moves the pistons up and down. Then we have another or two more sensors, one in the intake camshaft. This is your intake manifold. Intake means where the air goes in the engine. And then the exhaust camshaft, where the exhaust valves are and the exhaust muffler and everything. This is a rod with lobes that will open and close the valves. Like that you understand uh, pretty much what we gonna, uh, I'm going to show you. All right, so this is the capture on your car. The blue channel is the crankshaft. The red channel, as I'm naming here, is the intake camshaft. And the green channel is the exhaust. So what we need or we're looking for is to count, to count how many teeth after this notch each of those cams are located. So in this case, and this is an idle, as I'm marking here, idle bad because I know now there is bad. And this is at the first moment, even though it says uh, window five of nine. I'm going to show you. Let me actually move forward. That now both cams are in the same spot. But if I go forward, maybe that if I get the zoom out, 
Yeah, if I go uh, to the next window, we're now in six. See, now they're not lining up. And this is the same running again. And if we go to the next window, still they're not in the same place. And then they go back in the same place. Something is loose, is the timing chain, is the panel, something is not right. But okay, going back to the first one where we were, number five. Let's just start with that one. We can see that we have both cams in the same spot and we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, and then number 12 teeth. Both are the same. We have a known wood waveform that we can compare yours to. Uh, this is an idle, as you can see, it says idle. And then we have the same values, the same things, the crank, uh, intake, and exhaust. As you can see, they're completely in different places. Let's measure the intake first. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Yours is an 11, so that will be two tooth off. That is uh, 30 degrees off. But then if we measure the exhaust, we have two, four, six, let's go again, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, and the starting of the 16 to 11, that's five tooths off. Five tooths is 15 degrees each, so 30, 60, 75 degrees off. That is a lot. That is a lot, a lot of time in an engine that can create even further issues, and that's why you have misfires. If we go further in yours, where we saw that next capture, okay, right here, right? So we are, the, the banners, uh, let me explain you that too, because I didn't tell you that till you see that capture. This engine also has, in front of every camshaft, it has a valve that can, the computer can control through these solenoids in here, and they just supply oil when the computer wants it, right? And it can move a sprocket, so it moves the cam back and forth to whatever the position the computer wants it in both sides. This car, your car has a two panels in front. So, and that's why we can see that the exhaust moved and, I, and the intake. And I'm gonna tell you why both. Let's measure this and at least hopefully in this one it does. Two, four, six, eight, nine, almost 10. We were in 11. So these one went back a little and that's probably the maximum the computer can, can make it go. Is it still not in nine? Two, four, six, eight, nine, almost 10. The computer wants it in nine. And then this one, it has to be in 16. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. It should be in 16, 40, 60 degrees, and it's on a half, so 75 degrees off. So definitely, without a doubt, your engine is off the time. One other thing that I wanna show you, I also recorded this with the engine cranking, and again, that's what I have, those disconnected. I wanna show you that, that it's also off the time. So let me stop the video and prepare those captures, and I'll be right back. All right, Arvin, this is gonna be a little long video, but it's very important that you understand what is happening with your car. Again, this is the capture, Arvin correlation cranking. And I mark it in here as well. As you can see, they're still lining up, and on this crank uh, capture, let me completely get out of here. It's only one window, because I changed the timing, so it's a very long window. They all stay there. So cranking, there's, well, the computer is, the, the computer doesn't move the, the banners, so it's what we call base timing. Even though it's in base timing, let's see how many tooth we have. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, and it's starting the 12. Again, this is in your car. If you go over to the known good, right here. Let me zoom a little more so we can count those teeth better. Perfect. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 
14, 15, almost 16. And we have another one, 12? The start of 12. The start of 12. So, and this is the start of 16. So we got four teeth off, which is 60 degrees. So again, 15 degrees per tooth. So 15, 30, 45, 60. At idle, this car, uh, sorry, not at idle, at cranking, the timing is off 60 degrees on both intake and exhaust. It's like I said, we have definitely, we're not gonna have to tear apart your engine. I need to see how the timing change uh, looks, but if I don't see any, um, because again, with the engine um, cranking, those vanos are off. Unless these vanos are loose, that's the only thing that can happen. If the bolt, the holes, that sprocket, you will see when we take it apart, has become loose. Not like completely, because otherwise the car would not even start. But if they have become loose and they're not in the correct position, the engine can never reach the timing. So I need to check that. And now that I have enough information like this, I can give you a recommendation to go the right way. Again, Arvin, you're in good hands. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.